Friends and students here at SUU, welcome to Teaching and Learning at Southern Utah University, a podcast that delves into the dynamic world of education in one of the most vibrant academic communities. Join us as we explore innovative teaching methodologies, insightful discussions with educators, and inspiring stories of student growth. Whether you're a seasoned educator or a curious student or simply passionate about the art of learning, this podcast is your window into the enriching experiences that shape Southern Utah University. University's learning environment. Tony Pellegrini here today with our uh, this month's uh, iteration of our course. We've got Matt Barton here with us that uh, I'll be interviewing and sharing his uh, perspectives and observations regarding teacher teaching and teaching here at Southern Utah University. Matt's a professor in the online Masters of Arts program in, prof- in our professional communication program and is uh, last year's Board of Trustees Award of Ele- Uh, excellence winners uh, for our faculty. Matt, would you take a moment or two to introduce yourself to us and to our listeners? Absolutely. I've been at Southern Utah University for more than 20 years now. I currently serve as a department chair from the communication department, so I've had some different experiences there and worked as a graduate director prior to that, and then I've taught a host of classes. I've developed as coming in, having some handed to me, others I've had to develop both graduate and undergraduate levels. So I think SUU is a great place to get an education. So it's exciting. Despite Thank- my best efforts, we still have a good. <laughs> <laughs> we need you. We need you. We need you. Absolutely. Uh, let me let me just go, jump right in and start with questions. Can you talk to us for a moment or two, Matt, about some of the key skills that you that you see your learners acquiring uh, through your courses that you connect with your learners? I hope they acquire them. So let me just I writing down a couple of thoughts about it. I I think the main thing that I've started to do recently is, so coming in to talk about, like last week we talked a lot about credibility. So I've spent time reading about credibility and a bunch of the factors that affect that. And I think students come in with an idea like, yeah, you need to know what you're talking about, a couple other maybe softer side skills. But I give them information and I ask this question, did you learn anything? And they say, well, yeah. And I go, but here's the real key question. Do you know more about credibility now that we finished the conversation than you did coming in? So that to me is a starting point. So I think skill-wise, I wrote down the ideas of thinking about what am I really doing? I think number one is deepening knowledge. That's a goal I have. I think knowledge is very valuable. You can't ever apply it, right? You can't draw from an empty well, so to speak. So that's there. I think the next thing is to think critically about the knowledge that you obtain. What was the source? How does it fit together? Are there places where it doesn't make sense or there's gaps, right? That's an important part of that. And the last one is to be able to apply it. So I think knowledge that you can't apply ever is knowledge that's probably largely wasted. So That application is so critical and such a wonderful opportunity that we have here, either with our online or our face-to-face students. The practical application of knowledge is so critical to them uh, acquiring good jobs and being able to move on from from their uh, college experience. Yeah, agreed. Do, uh, the, you know, I shared with you the four uh, C's that are so important in, um, uh, in curriculum and in instruction and in assessment. Those C's are critical thinking, collaboration, communication, creativity. How have you enjoyed those or participated or engaged in those over your 20-year career here at SUU? Uh, the time's changed, I think, on that. So what I've been doing the last few years, and I'll take one of my favorite classes to teach, I think, because of the content, and that's a persuasion class that I teach. And that class, I think, gives me a chance to roll all those together. At least I, I kind of backed into rolling them all together. So what I've done the last few years is I've found a, a client that's been local. Some of the last little while, a couple have been in St. George. So I reached out, just people that I know. In fact, most recently, a couple of alum from our program that are working with different clients. So Right now I have, uh, we won't do an old school radio payola here, but I have a client that works in a lane of watches that people are using that are running like ultra marathon runners, other kinds of things. And it's a high end watch. It's developed in home base of Southern California. So I have a former student that I'm working with and then I've divided my class into three teams. So this is how I get into that. So three teams work on one product, three teams work on another. I've invited the client to come up second day of class ask me any questions about it, tell you about the program, get all the materials, and then they have to put together a pitch, an advertising pitch just like they would do. And so they have to create social media content, Instagram posts, Facebook posts, a contest idea, TikTok reels, and they have to do that. And then the client will come back up actually about five weeks from now, and they'll present to the client. And he'll rank them one, two, three. They can earn extra credit points. 
So what does all that do? Well, they have to think critically about the material. They have to research. They have to work collaboratively in teams, which I'm sure you know from your own teaching experience is something that people go, I hate group work. And I'm like, good news. It's not a group. It's a team, right? And you have to work in that in professional settings so you get a chance to, to work on that collaboration. And then, obviously, there's creativity involved in there, right, and be able to stand up and do that. And that's exactly the type of work that some students might do from our program. Right? So they're getting that education, and I feel like that's been a really useful way to bring some of those things together. And they're working, instead of something that I've manufactured as a hypothetical company or product, they're working with a real product, one that hasn't even dropped or one that's going to drop, and they need to figure out what's happening. The benefit for students is they have an opportunity to develop that, and then the kind of agreement I have with the client coming in is if they like some of the material that you've done, then they'll work with you with permission, and you might actually be part of their advertising materials or their campaign. So I think it's been a real value-added kind of proposition position. I wish I would have thought of it like years ago, but I've used it probably the last three years, really post-COVID, and it's it's done really well. And I've had clients that have dealt with an, an ice cream franchise. I've had products for um, this kind of ultra marathon running lane. And in, in the spring, I'll have another brand new client I haven't even done. And that's again with another student. The other advantage of having students come back is, hey, I'm employed. I have a communication degree from SUU and I'm working in a field that I love. Right, So one student has moved around to different companies. He's got a great position now. The other one has started working together. They didn't know each other while they were here due to kind of just kind of the age when they were here. And now he started his own ad agency. So there's just a whole bunch of cool win-wins there. So that's what I've tried to do. I think that's wonderful. I think really the fact that your students really are applying almost for jobs or being interviewed from the first day of going in, that they have that opportunity, those practical experiences to, to, uh, to bring to the table and to deal with real-world clients. Um, so powerful, so profound. Uh, additionally, too, I, I really uh, like the opportunity that they have uh, to be able to say, uh, put that on their resume like you've identified. Yeah. Hey, I have done this. As I complete my degree, I can, yes, I can take my diploma from SUU, but I can also take some very practical experiences that I've had and, and, and clients that I've had to be able to say, this is what others have seen me be able to do and be able to perform to. What powerful, what powerful, powerful resume builders those are. Yeah, they're, they're huge. And I think to add on to that a little bit, you hopefully you get to establish credibility as a professor, right? And if you do that well and you have someone, they blast off and, and they think, oh, yeah, they've done a good job educating me. And they go out and, and work and they learn new things, right? And then they come back and you kind of have to reestablish credibility again, right? So to see what the students can do and then, hey, guess what? Well, we could really use a couple of interns, right? So then you get a chance to do that. So I, And I've had students that they've had their work used. They've been interns. They've been able to do some other writing. But it's just nice to have something that's actually actually been done that's concrete. It's for a real business with a real product. And I feel like that's a nice application. So bringing those skills together, I think, is something that we can do. It just sometimes takes a little bit of finagling about how you're going to do that. Geographically, I think, it's hard to get someone to come. And fortunately, you know, you, you sort of lean on people you know a little bit. Would you be willing to drive up to Cedar City, you know, and spend in there even though gas is a zillion dollars a gallon, right? And and they've been good because I think there's a lot of people looking to give back. Well, and I can see even, even see those that may want to, you know, use some of the technologies that we have available. You know, do, okay, you can't afford gas to come up, but could you spend an hour with us in Zoom? Yeah. You know, sharing information and, and sharing your ideas, sharing screens together, pictures, uh, you know, concepts associated with what we're we're doing. Absolutely, that face-to-face pressing the flesh is so important. But, um, you know, there are other tools that we have that are good enough yeah. to maybe make some of those connections as well. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I wanted to move on to um, the term authentic. Um, you'd mentioned authentic, those authentic tasks that you press for students. Can you talk to us for a moment or two or a few minutes about the authenticity as well as the, the, the transferability of these tools? I think you have to have experiences that are real. So even I'll use today as an example. So I've been interested in a new application for a phone app, right? It's called the Magic Eraser. So Google is marketing this product with their Pixel 8 phone. And one thing that's interesting to me and a little bit disturbing in an AI world is what's authentic. So head on, what's that question? So we watched the commercial. 
tied it into a theory in my communication theory class. I said, let's look at these stages that information passes through in the way media sets an agenda. So it's not just the old news that you and I grew up on, right, where you're sitting in front of a TV and you're there at 5 and 10 faithfully, and if you're not, you have to go to the newspaper, right? Well, those days people say are gone, but not entirely. They've just transformed into something else. So when I watch that ad, you can take things out, right? You can change people's facial expressions and make everybody smile and happy. So the question I asked was, what is real? What is authentic? Are we creating a world that is or one that we wish was, right? So take, if you're going to get married, I think a lot of people, significant day in their life, probably one of the larger ones, if it's crappy weather outside, what are you going to do? Are you going to just take the photos and remember the day as it was? Or are you going to come back and erase all the things out, right? Well, I didn't want it to snow on my wedding day, so therefore it's not, and I'm going to change it to the Bahamas, right? So I really think that some of the authenticity is just asking ourselves, what are we doing that's real? At SUU, we talk all the time about find your voice while you're here, and that's the note that I'm singing loudly is find your voice. Don't let AI find it for you. You find your voice, right? And how do you do that? And that's that's when you start skill development and ramping up. So authentic things for me is trying to build a foundation of knowledge and of skills and work students through and say, now, is this you or what's good about this or what's bad about that? But it, I think it gave them something to think about with AI. What am I really generating here? If I can erase things out I don't like and alter the very nature of whatever I'm looking at, whether it's a text or a photo, a video, what do I believe? Right? Well, and I think, too, that transparency, that honesty um, is so critical to uh, communication, to, you know, advertising and, and making sure that the product that we are advertising and marketing is the real product that we we want to uh, do, that we want to share. Uh, can I ask, add one Please, more thing? Please, absolutely. So if you think about that, you probably have heard this term that's, I guess we'll say, coming into vogue, right? So deep fakes. Mm -hmm. So, right? So recently, Tom Hanks... We take AI, we generate his face and his voice, and then he gets attached to a dental insurance ad. And then he comes out on Instagram and other social media outlets and says, that's not me. That's not me. The same thing happened to Gail King when I brought it up today. Students had a couple other ones. Joe Rogan, who's really made his kind of fame and fortune with the UFC. Right? So what is a real thing in the world and how do we identify some of these fakes? Because we've made technology easy and it's the driving force. And so for me, you know, old pop culture references, it always goes back to Jurassic Park, right? We only ask whether or not we could, not whether or not we should, right? So I think just authentic, it's, it's a combination of things, me being real in the classroom and trying to do that and us looking at really authentic things and what is the end product of a learned person at a university. And so I don't think it's taking shortcuts, but that's me. No. And uh, two, I really like going back just a, a question or two about those critical thinking skills. We want our students to leave SUU with some critical thinking skills to be able to make those decisions or those termina determinations. What is real? How do I find out what is real? How do I use my skills to be able to determine what is real and what is maybe less than real? A hundred percent. Yeah, I really agree with that. And I think that's the, the nature of the business that we're in, in doing that. And so I, I think when you bring up any position that pushes back a little get against AI, then you add, well, you know, he's a he's an anti-AIist, right? Or whatever we're going to generate is the, is the negative, right? To punch you in the face back. And I'm like, no, no, no. I'm not saying it's all bad. Let's not, to use the old expression, throw the baby out with the bathwater. We're not going to do that. But what we are going to do is be a lot more deliberate and intentional in what we choose to do with the technologies. And I think if we talk about that, that maybe authenticity becomes the center and these other issues sort of orbit around it, and then we figure out the ones that we can tolerate and the ones that we can't, the ones that maybe we ought to modify. Well, one of the things, too, and again, going back a question or two, uh, that balance between should and could, I sure would like to see my learners leave here from SUU with understanding themselves, like you said a moment ago. Who are you? What are your values? What is core to you? And how do you balance um, that, that should and could in your own life and with, with educational issues and whatever? Whatever discipline you're you're following, I think that's absolutely profound. Yeah, it's good. It, I, just in a big deal, I gave them, 
just my working background. So outside of higher education, I've worked in public relations and then I've worked in radio. And in that industry, you know, my voice was kind of the starting point, but I worked in promotions and then, you know, commercials, writing copy, doing some of those kinds of things. But I said, what would you do if you were in a situation where you've been hired to promote a product or a service or an organization that morally you might stand against, right? So then you give them the question, ask me if I've done that. And the answer is, yeah. And is that comfortable? If I had to do it over again, would I do that, right? Because sometimes we get a task and they hired me to do a job and then you go, hmm, so what's real in that moment, right? What you're doing, are you asking people, in my case, promoting a lot of activities that kind of put people into peril a little bit, right? Where they could make bad judgments and do dumb things, right? All in the name of here we are, entertainment, all these kinds of things, right? So I don't regret that to the extent that I've learned from it, but going back, I think I might take a different stand now, right? As one of the old guys, I guess. <laughs> well, you're in good company. You're in good company here with me, Matt. But two, I love that perspective that you have of in that moment, in that moment with the, you know, with the critical thinking skills that I had, with the experience that I had, with the values that I had at my core, this is the decision I made. These are some other factors that have happened since that time where in this moment, it may have been a different thing. It's not necessarily right or wrong, but just based upon those, the values that we have, the, the background that we have. I appreciate, sure. I appreciate you bring that to the table. Um, how do you, uh, as department chair, how do you engage with your department or your college peers to discuss teaching and learning? Is, it, is that an open communication that you have with your peers? What do you do that? Uh, it that? is. I, I've tried to create a different environment as much as possible, and that environment has allowed me to just bring up, hey, what do you think about? So last year in our department meetings, one thing we did is I, I got people to do like a 10-minute teaching activity. So we brought it in, come in, present. This is what I'm doing. This is why I'm doing it. This is how I'm structuring it. Present it to the department. And then everyone could kind of weigh in on like, wow, this is a great idea, which all of them were. And then we could talk about And then there was the opening the scary door of like, if you had to change it, what advice would you offer me, right? And you know how that is. Like, yeah. you get over that kind of feeling of once you get to know your class a little bit, a lot of that reticence and communication that's quite natural because we're in performance mode starts to fade. But do that in front of your peers, right? I mean, that's a, that's a different story. And then in front of your department where people are evaluating your performance and looking at that. But we shared ideas, and it became like a really cool thing. So carrying that over into this year – we started our, our first meetings this year with, okay, now let's present a teaching tool, right? So I had uh, my, my good friend and writing partner, uh, Kevin Stein, right, who directs our master's program, came in and, and shared some things about Anoto and some of the skills that are available there. And as we, as we have to learn to develop more abilities, I would say, in an online modality, that's really valuable, right? So we've gone from, hey, this is what I'm doing, and now here's a teaching tool, and so we're looking for those kinds of things. So I hope that we'll catch that. But it's just a way to kind of say, don't be scared to share ideas. Don't be afraid to try. Don't be afraid to fail. I think we're programmed not to fail because, you know, and this is it. You've, I'm sure you've had classes where you're like, that's a walk-off home run, right? I'm out of here. Other days where I feel like I'm on some kind of a shot out of the sky mission in an old war movie and I'm just careening towards the ground. Right? More the second than the first, <laughs> yeah. I promise you. More right. the second than How's the first. It goes, right? So I think it's just opening up some of that dialogue for people and not being afraid to just share ideas and talk. And uh, it doesn't mean if someone disagrees that it's bad, but I think you can get a lot of support. I know I've taken ideas and been able to refine them by having other people being aware willing sounding board. And then, you know, you get a chance to be in both of those chairs. And I think it's really important that you take advantage to be in those chairs and not to be afraid of them. Right. So Matt, thank you so much. And uh, we're, we're kind of wrapping up right now. Uh, one last question for you that I'd like you to address. You, 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 you've provided such great service to SUU. You've got a great history at SUU. We've got a lot of new faculty, a lot of, uh, a lot of new students that are here. Uh, some words of wisdom for faculty or students uh, with your, with your experience here at SU, uh, how, a, anything that you would have to share with other faculty to, to help them understand how to, how to contribute to teaching and learning here at SUU? I'd start by saying I knew my gray hair was going to come in handy. I thought it was a fashion <laughs> statement, but it's clearly because I'm a sage, right? Um, my dad used to say this phrase, if you can ever use advice, remember this, it's always free. And if it becomes valuable for you, it's probably a miracle, right? <laughs> so just let me preface with that. I think I would say the SUU has seen in you amazing potential and they brought you here to succeed. 
And so I don't think people should look over their shoulder. I think the younger you are, the more tendency you have to look over your shoulder, try to make every single thing perfect. And I don't think that's the case. I think we ought to try new ideas. I think you need to take time to engage with your learners, get to know their name, get to know where they're from, what they like to do, their favorite breakfast cereal, their biggest fear, and engage with them, right? And I think you can still have those kinds of appropriate professional boundaries between student and, and faculty member, but you can let them know that you care about them, right? And you're about their success. And then I've started asking some questions. My job interview here comes to mind with our former president, Steve Benyon, that you knew. He asked me, "One, what do you do? And I said, I find pop culture ideas to connect because I think that's the, the really the language of the masses. And he said, well, I don't know that I'd like anything they want. They watch. And my response was, this is dangerous, but I said, it doesn't matter. I'm not teaching you. And then I thought, this is going to make or break my interview. And he's, he said, yeah, I think that's a good point, right? And so I, I think it's what can I do to connect with students in their world and, and drag that in and, and kind of teach them, and I think that's important. Um, and the last thing I'd say is don't be afraid to ask for help. There's a, there's a lot of people around that can help you, like, the CTI has been a great addition to campus, right? As I, I call all the time, hey, I don't know how to do blank, or could you help me, whatever. And I always get greeted with, like, this is the most profound question ever asked. And they probably filled it at a dozen times. Just me alone, right? I should, I should have my own separate line. <laughs> but it, it's that kind of stuff. So well, and, that, and, and I'm grateful that you shared that because that's really what I would like to encourage, I encourage our listeners to do is please reach out to Matt. If you have a question, if you'd like to watch him in, in, in one of his classes or visit with him in his office hour, he'd love to reach out to you and, and, and connect with you and, and make those connections that are so important to keep you here at SUU and to keep you moving forward. So thank you so much, Matt, for, for being willing to do that. Uh, with that, this wraps up another enlightening episode of Teaching and Learning at Southern Utah University. We've delved into the innovative strategies that Matt has used to foster engaging classrooms and learned about the transformative journeys of our learners. From technology integration to mentorship, each discussion has provided valuable insights into the world of education here at Southern Utah University. Matt, thank you. Thank Listeners, you. thank you. And we'll, hear, we'll, we'll be back next month with a new speaker. Ciao, ciao.